So one thing I like to do before I put any cladding on, so the final bit of the envelope, is I like to go around and if there's any holes, for example, a cable hole, I like to make sure I've filled those holes. And the product I'm using is a HB42 hybrid polymer. I'll also be using this when I put my molded corner up. It's a rebated section of timber. I'll be using that behind there as well. It gives it a little bit of flexibility. One thing I'll also do as well, when my bottom row of cladding goes on, against my vent strip here, it's designed to fit exactly over it, so there's no space. Timber sometimes undulates, so if there's any undulation there, what's prudent is, I'll also go along with a line of this here, bottom row of cladding, bedded against, and then I'm completely sealed from those insects and other things that want to get up inside. I've got a rebate in the back, and what I'm going to do with this, another line of polymer in here, I'll set that up, put my level on it. If there's any slight deviation, I can pull it in and out, fix it, and that polymer will go off and hold it exactly where I want it. Particularly like these guns, get a hell of a lot more in them. They're better value, and more importantly, we're not slinging away loads of empty plastic tubes. The other thing is, this will actually probably hold it in place while I go and get my gun. So if you can just pilot this out for me, so one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, yeah? Yep. Then we can pull it in and out and we're not gonna hit the screws. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix the batten at one point for now. There's my mark on there. Let's go here even. A gauge stick now. 14 I. So what I'm going to do is because I want my reveal to be dead true but more importantly when I cut 22 pieces of cladding for here I want to be able to use the saw with a stop and so they're all exactly the same size. It eliminates me having to put one in market, take it out and then potentially get some undulation. So by fixing it where I want it, I'll get myself a piece of batten that long, I'll offer it in and I'll move this in and out and I'll fix it up. So when I put my cladding on, every bit can be exactly the same length. Saves time, but moreover, it will look perfect. These are really plumb. That corner's really plumb. So it will be parallel and square. Who's that by pencil? These screws are designed just for battening. 77 millimeters long. It's the absolute perfect length. And they've got a really interesting head, which is dead flat with a slight countersink. So it doesn't push the batten apart without a countersink. And obviously we're ox. So it's good for moisture. And for anyone who's interested in the colour of this batten, this is a British standard batten. So on most sites, especially new builds, let's say we were doing roofing, these are the battens that you need to use to comply. And simply, they are, they've got less big knots, which means if they're fixed between rafters and you step on it, it's not going to break. It's not just for strength, it's for safety also. They also reckon that they're much, much more uniform. So that is 50 by 25 or 48 by 25. So even though I'm doing just a simple battening off job, I like the accuracy levels. 
of this material. I've got a beautiful edge. It just, and it's about 10% dearer than the normal stuff. So why not use it? Now the last thing I do with this piece of batten is attach it to here and that stays there until I start the cladding. When I start the cladding I take this off, set the saw up to it, my stop on my fence and that is my cladding length. So I'm doing two jobs in one go. What I like to do when I'm battening a corner, instead of nailing one loose here and one loose here, I'll simply preform them. I'll get all my best lengths of battening for this job. I'll fix them together. Now, with timber frame, you've got a side with the skin coming through and you've got a panel butting into that skin. What you need to do is make sure you, that you've got the wide side over the skin that's butted against the panel. If you don't, because we're only fixing through 25 mil, so we're about 12 and a half in there, you'll go in between the skin and the OSB. It's nine mil OSB, you might catch the stud. So what we do there is, we make sure that this section goes over that join. So we're gonna flip it round and it's gonna run in there. This one gets into the face and the end of the stud and that one misses that join. So Robin, you're really a defender, so they've become your trademark really, haven't they? Yeah. Now, tell me why it is that you're rarely seen without them. Why, why ear defenders are so important to you? So, I was doing a roof, and I was around about 21, 22, and I was working in a, someone's back garden, cutting up roof rafters, and the client, the lady, she stood behind me, I was working away, and she was clapping really loud. I sort of stopped what I was doing. I turned around and she said to me, you can't hear me clap. I went, no. She went, a clap is like 100 decibels. She said, that saw you're using is well in excess of 100 decibels. She said, if you carry on like that, you are guaranteed to get tinnitus or something, a hearing disorder of some description. And it was literally from that day forward, I took her advice. And shortly after that, I was working for a guy who had tinnitus and he'd been a motor panel beater all his life and when we chatted about it and he told me how much he suffered and he couldn't sleep and all the rest of it, it just resonated with me and literally I never took these things off and so I just used to wear the standard ones and then one time I got a set with an FM radio and because I'm working on my own quite a lot it was just really nice to have some music in the background or something else so that's why, it's almost like an addiction for me. I have to have them with me now. I feel like they should be here. If I haven't got them on, I'm like, something's missing. So that's the reason why I use them. So it's safety, and I also quite like a little bit of music or talk radio while I'm working. So I noticed you've got yourself some swanky new ones here, haven't you? Yeah, so the observant viewers out there will always notice I used to have these blue ones. Now I've eat the life out of these and they've actually broken here and I've got duct tape which is there but they're really annoying me now because this one sort of hangs off here so they've uh, they've seen their uh, the end of their use unfortunately so they're going to be retired so I treated myself to these at Christmas they're by Helberg they're top of the range they feel really comfortable they're pretty strong 
again FM radio, they tune in well and they seem to hold the signal. Okay, if I knock the little button which untunes it, it's no big deal. And often I change channels as well. I like certain show in the morning and something else in the afternoon. But they do seem to hold the signal, even get a signal inside here. And I've got plenty of silver foil built into this building. So the next step, once we've set ourselves up, we've got our saw set up, we've got a great saw table there, is cutting all the cladding. So what I did before we start on the cladding is we make all the reveals up. So we've got a thermo wood reveal, which is a rip with a rebate to make sure that the face is nice and tight there. We've air tighted all the frames, the trims go in. We've routed all of those trims as well, all the way around the edges. So when the trim goes back, you've got this nice little detail which matches the corner posts that we've put in. We've got a cat door here, which is made out of Tricoir MDF. So we've cut right through the envelope of the building really neatly, really tightly, so there's no air around it, there's no gaps. And this tricoir door goes all the way through to the back of the plasterboard on the inside. You can still see the vapor barrier that's intact there. So um, that was quite key to me to make sure that when I cut through, I didn't hit the vapor barrier. Now I can literally glue it, cut it off inside flush and just put a little bit of glue around there. And then the actual cat door slides into that it's actually intended for a, a house like this which is airtight so um, it's got two flaps one on the inside one on the outside and it's magnetic as well so hopefully we won't get any air leakage or heat leakage more importantly there so this is the first row that's fixed of the cladding it's fixed over the vent strip which you'll see so the cladding that we've got is called thermo wood so we've all softwood cladding they don't want to be jammed up tight. Now this is really dry, it's been stored in the garage and the manufacturers say that there should be a two mil gap between each one. And that just allows for a little bit of expansion and contraction during the year. So when you've got a lot of moisture, it's going to expand and in the summer it's going to come back. If you start off and you jam them tight like that, the chances are if it expands, it's going to want to pop the nails out, it's going to want to pop the pins out. So. What we need to use also is a stainless steel pin. And the reason for that is if you use a, co a coated galvanized type one, as it's driven through, sometimes the coating is damaged and then you can get corrosion and the chances are it might pop off. Um, you could probably get away with it, but I'm gonna use a stainless steel pin. So the gauge that I'm working to is 110 millimeters. So what I've got is a gauge stick here. It's hard to see probably, but it's all marked up at 110. It's got a little tongue at the bottom there, which basically means that once the bottom row of cladding's in, I slot that to there, and that is the rebate every time. Now the best way of setting this out is to hook your tape on, and 10 is gonna be, if it's 110, 10 is gonna be 1100, 22, and then I go around and I make sure I mark them all up really accurately. You only wanna do this once. And then I have an arrow on the top, which indicates which is up, and which is down and I use that gauge stick for everything but before I did that when it was dark I set my laser up outside right in the middle from this corner to the farthest corner and I put a datum round and on my gauge stick I've got that datum marked and so before I start any cladding I go around and I just check that the bottoms are all exactly where I want them and when you're running a horizontal cladding like this it's pretty critical that you get the first one level, obviously, but equally, as you're going up, because some of the timbers have a tend to have a bit of a bend in them, and this is quite solid material. If it's a long length, you can pull the bend out. So you've just got to make sure you select the straight ones where you can't pull the bend out. So when we did every panel, we set up a rod. That rod sets the distance between our trims and so we put the door trim up dead straight and then we use this everywhere and any sort of undulation there, we adjusted it. That comes off there, goes onto the saw table against the blade, we put the stop in and then we just cut a whole load of repeats. And all this cladding now is ready to go up. So there's no measuring once you've done that initial bit of work. So these ones here, that's fixed. These are loose now. I'm gonna start by fixing the top one up to my mark. You can see I've had to pull it up, which is the expansion. And then I'll just sight these ones up 
So I like to run about four courses at a time. Level the fourth one up to the mark and then just space the other ones up a couple of mil every time. I like to fix these around about 30 millimeters up from the bottom, which effectively pulls the tongue of that one. The next one will pull the tongue of that one. And so it's a nice, a nice fixing. Oh, is there a cat there? Meow. Here we have, for this section of cladding, our setting button. So we just whiz that over to the saw, remove our fence, which is finished on that section we were doing. We've got a piece of tricoil, a little bit of aluminium as a fence. And that's all we're doing is pinching that between there. Check it for square off of our fence. She moved a bit then, and she's good. And there we have it. Then we can cut cladding. We'll test the first one. Like there's a couple of knots here, I know I can lose it. So that's a little bit more of my cladding completed. I've got a little way to go yet, so I'm going to carry on and get that finished. So join us on Skill Builder for another exciting episode of the Cable Build. Keep checking back.